Okay, so we're on number four. Okay, so again, one, one more time, let me, let me point out, we're going to, in 4.2, start with law of cosines, then law of sines, and to avoid uh, the, uh, well, um, never use largest side when doing sine inverse so that you do not have to worry about second answer option. You know, the one that was second equals 180 minus first kind of thing. We want to never worry about that. We want to never have to worry about that, and so just never use the largest side. Okay, so what does that mean, never use the largest side? Well, like in this example, here, here we start off. Do I, do I, uh, well, first off, as, as you look at this question, look at number four here, how would you know um, on the same, the exam next Tuesday, right, exam next Tuesday, or the final in two weeks from today, how would you know when everything's all mixed up that this is not to be done with law of sines? I mean, I know you know tonight because it, you're in the law of cosines section. Because there's only one. Well, there's not a complete set. There's not a complete set. Yeah. There's not A with A, B with B, or C with C. Yeah. Right? That's when you use law of signs. When you, so if they'd, if they'd given me, like, instead of C here, if that was B equals 4, I'd jump right on the law of signs. Because I'd have B with B. I'd have a complete set. That's a good way to put that. I like that. For, I'm going to steal that from you, Jose. I like that. A complete set, right? If you have a complete set, law of signs. B with B, or A with A, or C with C. But notice we don't. They're giving me three different. An A, an A piece of information, a C piece of information, a B. So got to use law, law signs will not work. Got to jump into law of cosines. Okay, so I'm going to use law of cosines. When I do on this problem, uh, which one am I going to start? Well, I already have A and C. Oops, A and C. So I'm going to start with the B squared version. Remember, there's the three versions of the law of cosines, right? So I'm going to start with the B version because that's the one I don't have. So jump in with the B. How's it go? The law of cosine says any side squared is the other two, kind of like the Pythagorean, you know, A squared, B squared, C squared kind of thing. It's the other two minus two times those two times the cosine of which one? Yeah, the whatever one you started with, that angle, B. Remember the law of cosines? Those are three different versions. Whichever one is the other two minus two times the other two times the cosine of the angle that goes with the beginning letter. Yeah, so there it is. So B squared is 6 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 6 times 4 times cosine 52. Hit the buttons on your calculus. This is probably where I'm going to go quick. 36 plus 16 minus... Make sure you're in degree mode. I think you probably are. 22.448, and then root it, root it. I'm getting B equals 4.739. Um, Remember, use a, use a few more places of, of decimal. Did you guys run into trouble with the decimals in the homework last night? So the answer to that is always use a bunch of places until you're all done and then round everything wherever they want it rounded. Right? So use three or four places all the way through the problem, and you'll be fine. And then just round everything at the end. So I got B. So now, now, I've, I've, that was law of cosines, right? So remember the steps are right here. Let me go back. Start with law of cosines, then go on to law of sines, huh? So there it is. I just did law of cosines. So now, now, Use law of signs. Okay, and uh, why? Well, because I, I have a complete set, like Jose says. B with B, don't I? I have a B and a B now. So I have a complete set, so I can use law of signs. Now, 
I'm about to use law of sines. What is the golden rule about law of sines? Don't do what? Don't use the largest size. Don't use the large size. So in other words, what, what size? We have all three sides now. Now we know which one's the large side. Which side, A, B, and C, which one's the largest side? A is 6. That's bigger than C, which is 4, and B, which is 4.7. Yeah, A is the largest side, so I'm not. Don't use A, huh? Do not use the largest side A. So instead, instead use C. So I'm going to go C, which is... 4 over sine of C, which I don't know, is B. What's B? 4.7379 over sine of B, and that I do know, 52 degrees. So that makes sense. So there's a not using the large, largest side example. The reason I don't use the largest side, because if you use the largest side, you're going to have to worry about, you know, which of the two answers and all that, and that's confusing. Is that making sense? And then you just go diagonal, diagonal, zip and a zip, 4 sine 52, 4.7379 sine C, like that. <clears throat> solve for, solve for, C, I'm going to divide 4.7379, 4.7379, boom. So I get 4 sine 52 degrees over 4.7379 is the sine of C. How do you turn that into regular C? What am I going to do? Sine inverse of the left side. Sine inverse of the right side, they cancel. Hit the buttons on your calculator. That'll be C. I'll do it real quick. Sine inverse for. C equals 41.704 degrees. See, I'm using a few places of accuracy. Right? So always use like three places of three decimal places until the very end and you and then round everything when you're all done and it'll it'll be good. So that's the way you want to do the homework tests, all of it. Always use like three places of decimal three decimal places and then round at the very end according to how far they tell you and it'll all be good. <clears throat> and then the only other angle is uh, A, you can find that by subtracting from 180. We're done. Is that good on that one? So you get in the moral of the story. When you use the law of signs, don't use the largest sign. As long as you avoid that, you're good. We start with the law of cosines, then we move on to the law of signs once we have a complete set, like Jose says. All right, I'm going to move on. Yep, real quick. So this one, number five, they're giving me three sides. That's a little different. No angles at all, huh? They want me to find all three angles. So how do we do it when we have three sides? Going to start with law of cosines. How do we know? Because we don't have a complete set again. Huh? Like Jose says, I don't have A with A, don't have B with B, don't have C with C. So I've got to use law of cosines, don't have a complete set. So I use law of cosines. So now, when I use law of cosines, which one am I going to start with? Or how about if I put it this way? Which one, well, yeah, which one am I going to start with? <laughs> Gonna say something clever, but it didn't make sense. Uh, which which one am I gonna start with? Doesn't matter. Well, sort of doesn't matter. I know what you mean, but okay. Remember what we want to have in our mind. After, got to think about the future. It's kind of like playing chess, right? You got to think three steps down the line here. So, law of cosines. In a minute, right after this step, we're gonna go to law of sines. And what will be the big issue when we get there? We're going to start with the biggest one. Yeah. When we get to law of signs in a minute, we want to not use the biggest side. Never use the longest side when you get to law of signs. So if on the next step, I want to make sure I'm not going to be dealing with the largest side, what's an easy way to handle that right now? The do the biggest side now. Wait, I thought you don't want to do the biggest 
On no, 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 I'm doing cosines right now. Yeah, but like because. So when I get to sines, I don't oh, want to do the okay, big okay, sign. So you do cosine yeah, sine, yeah. right? So I'm doing because cosines it doesn't matter at all. Cosines has no problem at all. Even if you did pick the biggest sign, like what if you picked seven right now? Like yeah. you'd still be able to do that though. Right? You'd be able to do the other side, huh? Yeah, because. Yeah, it's is that true? That's how I did it. Yeah, I think, I I think I that's didn't right. Pick the biggest one. You just started with seven. Really, you could do the seven or the five. And then when you do the law of sides, yeah, just make sure you're still not using the biggest side. You'd be okay. Yeah, I you think you're right. You use seven or eleven. Yeah, you yeah. Okay. yeah. You'd, you'd want to use. Yeah, just don't use that eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you're right. I, I think there are options here. Yeah, Bernadette. That basically, if we solve the angle for the eleven side using the cosine formula now, right. we don't have to solve the angle with sine. We never want to solve That's the it. angle for sine. Side. That's right. That's exactly it. So we want to never use the biggest side when we're doing law of sines in a minute. So the easiest way. Now, some of those other ways might work too. I'm, I think they will. I think they will. But the for sure, like, don't even have to think twice about it way that's going to work is to just do the biggest side right now with law of cosines because he can handle it. But law of sines cannot. So just grab the 11. He's the biggest side. Just start with him. A squared is B squared plus C squared minus, how's it work? So one side is the other two sides squared minus two times those sides times the cosine of the one of the angle across from the one you started. Right? That makes sense? So I'll just handle the A, the biggest side, right now with the one that can handle it, law of cosines, and sines will never have to deal with it. Good? So then that'll be 11 squared. 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 7 times 5 times the cosine of A. And so that's 121, 49 plus 25 um, minus 70 cos A. And so that's 121, 74 minus 70 cos A. And subtract 74 from both sides. What's that? Which, I don't know. 6, 26, 47, I think. Yeah. And then um, divide by minus 70. Get down to here. How do we, um, how do we find cosine? How do we find A now? <laughs> cosine inverse. Both sides. And cosine inverse is not a problem. Cancels out. A is. Let's find it. Uh, cosine inverse. And there's 70. Boom. And we get 132.177 degrees. I used three decimal places. So we got A. See, A was bigger than 90, huh? Was an obtuse angle. Cosine inverse handle it, no problem. See, he was the biggest side, so across from him is the biggest angle. Right? So when you do law of cosines, start with the biggest side for law of cosines. Then you won't have to worry about the largest side later for law of sines. Because now I'm going to law of sines, huh? Whenever I do law of cosines first, now I'm moving on to law of sines. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. Okay? And move on. You would just go into law of sines now. Next you would go law of sines. Well, maybe I'll set it up. So A over A. So 11 over sine of 132.177 degrees is, because that's the pair I have. I hope I'm not confused. You might say, wait a minute, you said don't use it. You're using it right now. Well, I'm using it known. I know what the angle is. So, I, so what I mean is, when I say don't use it, don't use it as an unknown angle. Don't use it as your variable, because it'll have two options. You won't know which it is. I know it now, so it's fine to plug it in there with law of sines, right? A with A, 11 over sine 132.177 is what? B over B. So I could go B, 7, over sine of B. Or I could have done C over C. Doesn't matter. Neither one of those is the biggest side. 
And you know what to do from there. Dot, 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 cross, multiply. You got it. I'm going to move on. Are we good with that? Making sense? Law of cosines first, then you move into law of sines. Never use the biggest side for law of sines. And you're good. All right. Yeah. See what they're saying? A, B, and C are A. What kind of a tri triangle is that one? Equilateral. That's equilateral. I don't know if you know them. You don't have to know the names. But yeah, when they're all three the same, that's, let me draw it here. That's 8, 8, 8. They're all the same side. They're equilateral triangle. What does that mean? What, what does it call when two sides are the same? Isosceles. Isosceles. All three. It's called equilateral. And what does that mean about the angles? They're all the same. They're all the same. There's 180 total. Divide by three because they're all the same. 60 each, huh? 60, 60, 60. So what's angle A? 60. What's angle B? 60. What's angle C? 60. Done. Next problem. Number six, don't do law signs and cosines and all I did, that. I did right? do it. You didn't do law signs and cosines, did, did you? I did, I did two. <laughs> Just for one of them. Then you go, hey. Oh, yeah. I did two, but I thought it was easy practice, so, you know. Yes, yes. All right, so, formula. Thank you. All right, so Heron's formula is, um, well, here, let's. Is it not the same as the area formula? No, yeah, good, good question. This is a different area for us. So, yeah, I'm glad, Pauline, you mentioned that. I We're talking it. area here, first off. I used it, and it worked. <laughs> How would you know the sign of the angle in between? Do you do I, law of cosines or yeah. sines? Oh, that's a lot of work. No, this will be easier. You like this better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you could make the other thing work, but it would be a lot more work. Yeah, so, so what we're doing, so first off, Pauline's rise. Everybody dialed in with what Pauline's saying. We are finding the area. So we just shifted gears. I know this stuff can all start to look alike. You know, so let me help you distinguish it. So yes, this is different. This is area now, space in the middle. Like, what if this room was one big triangle and I wanted to get new carpeting? That's what we're talking about. Like, space in the middle. How much new carpeting? This was a big triangular room, right? So we're saying space in the middle of a triangle. We had a formula, yes, was yesterday or they before? That was one half A, B, sine of the angle in between. That's one good formula. That's one good way of finding the area, space. Notice, notice I'm not finding the sides here. I'm not finding the angles. I don't care about the angles. Right? I'm not doing what we just did. I'm not going to use law of sines. I'm not going to use law of cosines. That law of sines and cosines is for finding sides and angles, isn't it? I'm not finding sides and angles here. I'm finding space in the middle, area. We had a formula yesterday or the day before, one half AB sine. That's a good one. If they gave me an angle, I would use that one. It would be convenient. But they're not giving me an angle, so it'd be more convenient to use Heron's formula. That's for use when you just have three sides. How does it work? Well, first off, you have to define this thing called S, which is half of the perimeter. The perimeter, like if you have a triangle, you know, it's A, B, and C for the three sides. So the, it's half of A plus B plus C. So half the perimeter, S. I don't know why they call it S. I don't think it's called P or something. But whatever, they call it S. S is half of the perimeter, and then the area will use that. Here's the area. It's the square root of S times S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. It's a real quick, convenient way to find the space in the middle of a triangle, the you area. When I got it wrong with that formula, I was like, that doesn't look right. Let's <laughs> do it my way. So S is a half times three, uh, the half times these three sides added up, nine, nine, and eight. That's a half of 18, 26, 13. So that'd be 13, that's half the perimeter. I just added the three sides and took half of it. And then the area will be the square root of S, which is 13, times S minus A, times S minus B, which is the same, times S minus C. Everybody see what I did there? So, Paul, you did all the work to find the angle in between with <laughs> law of cosines. Hey, you guys use law of cosines. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So is that good? Everybody see what we're doing there? So I just found the S, half the perimeter, and then S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, 
And then simplify that. Um, 13 times 4 times 4 times uh, 5. Just boom, boom, boom. And that is... Do they just want to... Oh, they just want a decimal. Just hit the buttons on your calculator. So... So square root of 13 times... I'm getting 32.2. So they want it rounded to whole number 32. Is that good? Heron's formula? It's my formula. But I don't know if you notice they, they have the spelling wrong. All right. Uh, two ships leave a harbor, save time. One's traveling in a bearing south, 15 degrees west, 11 miles an hour. The other's uh, north, 75 east, at 10 miles an hour. How far apart will the ships be after three hours? Ooh, ooh, ooh. These are hard. These are a little tricky. So this is the kind of thing we're going to do at the end of the next section as well. Bearings and headings and angles and combining things with vectors is what we're going to do. So I want to get there. So, um, all right, so let me write this problem out. This is number nine. Let me just write down the key facts. South, 15 west at 11 miles an hour. South, 15 degrees west at 11 miles an hour. And the other one is going what? Uh, north, 75 east at 10. North. Whoop, that wasn't north. I wrote 10. North, 75 east at 10 miles per hour. So, and the question is, how far apart after three hours? How far apart after three hours? Okay, so there's the question. All right, so let's have a nice, helpful diagram here. So, all right, so let's make an axis system. The harbor is going to be the very, they both leave the harbor, same time, same place, leave the harbor. Uh, put the harbor the very center of the axis system. So see how math, by the way, is made. This is a good point to see how math works in the real world. It's a real-life problem. A couple ships headed. We're making up the axis system. It's not really there. There's not like an axis system sitting in the middle of the harbor. We're making that stuff up because it, it's math made up to help us solve real-life problems. Huh? That's how math works in the real world. You make up the math that fits the reality. All right. So one of the ships is headed south, 15 degrees. Remember those, um, those bearing, yeah, bearing, bearing things from a week ago or two weeks ago or whatever? So how do you do that? You start with what they say first, and, and, and um, so that's south. So here, here would be, here's north, south, east, and west. So we're headed south, but not straight south, 15 west of south. So that would be like around like that. This angle being 15 degrees off, right? It's south, but not straight south. It's 15 west of south. South, but 15 to the west. Everybody see that? That's where the first boat is heading. Let's say it stops right there after three hours. Is that good so far? Now, can you put the other one on the diagram? Now put the second one, the north 75 east. Can you put that on the diagram? Start, start, start at the harbor and half in the middle, the origin, and head off north, but not straight north, 75 east of north. 75 is almost the whole 90, isn't it? It's almost the whole 90. So, what's that going to look like? Um, that is, here's north. If they're straight, you know, start with north, because that's what they started with, north, but go 75 to the east of it. That means this is 75 degrees. It's going to have the same Kind of. No, notice that both of these come off the y-axis, which is exactly the opposite of how we used to do, or how we still do, reference angles, huh? You with me on that? Reference angles always come off the x-axis because that's where we put zero. They, they, they could have made zero straight up like a clock, but they decided, for whatever reason, I have no idea, to put zero straight to the right on the x-axis. So everything we do, everything we do, 
comes off the x-axis, except for these things. These bearing problems, they happen to put north and south first. North and south is the y-axis, so they're always giving us the angles off the y-axis for these bearing problems. I don't know why. They could have started with east and west, but whatever. They didn't. So they started with north and south, and the angles are always coming off the y-axis because they're coming off north and south, aren't they? Is that good to there? Okay. So now, what? So, so, so one of the ships heads north, 75, he heads up that way. The other's going south, 15, west. So the two, and they start at the same time, so both ships go. They're cruising, and this one's going whatever. One of them's going 10, one of them's going 11 miles an hour. They're cruising, 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 cruising. And then after three hours, we want to know how far apart they are. So in other words, how far from here to there, what's, what is that distance? That's what we want to know. How far apart are those two dots? So look what we got. What we've been studying intensely for four weeks now. Triangles. We are getting to be pros at triangles, aren't we? So it's a big triangle. So we want to find the bottom of this triangle, don't we? How can we do it? Can we use the angles that yeah. they gave us yeah. and add it to 90? Yeah, you're thinking right. So yeah, so what? So, so basically, if we can, oh, uh, first off, you're totally thinking right. Keep that thought. That's exactly right. Let me write the, the number here. First off, how far is the fast that one go? That one's going 10. 10 miles an hour. So in three hours, how far will it go? 30 miles. We get it's going, this one's going 10 miles every hour, 10 miles per hour for three hours. So it goes 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles, goes 30 miles. So let's just go ahead and say, okay, this side of the triangle is 30. The distance of that is 30. How about the other, the other one's going a little faster, 11 miles an hour for three hours. So it'll go 33 miles. So, so this ship will go 33 miles in this direction. That ship will go 30 miles in that direction. The question is, how far apart are they? Yeah. So let's talk about angles now. Is there a way we could try to, if we can find this entire angle here? It is. Yeah, how do, can, we, can we get that whole thing? How much is, this part's 15, this is certainly 90 right here. And what's this part right here? It's got to be 15 because... 90 minus 75 is 15. Clarence? So we just assume there's going to be a, a right triangle then when we're doing the whole bearings? Because it, it, we assume that the, uh, the tip of right there is 90. And we subtract it. We assume what? I missed that word. We assumed that the... Uh, the triangle is going to be a, a right triangle then. Where did I assume the triangle is right triangle? No, I just... No, north and south is right angle to east and west. That's just coordinate truth. That's all I assumed. Where, where do you feel like I assume something different? Well, because I thought a right triangle is uh, equal up to 90. And I thought since we're subtracting the 75 by the 90, we got that 15. Oh, I'm doing 75 by 90, not because of the triangle. Good, good question. I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, in fact, let me just erase the triangle to help your focus. Well, I don't want to confuse the issue. Just, um, it's just, this is 90. It's just the coordinate system is 90. Nothing to do with the triangle. Just this is a right angle. North hits east at 90 degrees. So I'm just looking at these two. Not even in the triangle. Does that make sense? You can just get rid of the rest of the triangle. I'm just thinking, these two make a northeast 90 degrees. So 75 and 15, huh? So these two have to make 90. Yeah, 90 minus 75. Cause yeah, because they have to make 90. They're the north and east coordinate system. Yeah, and then this is 90 because it's, again, I'm just doing the coordinate system here. This is a right angle 90 here. And then this is 15, they told us. 15. You know, it was south, 15 west. So 15, 90, and 15. If you add those three up, 15 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 15 degrees is 120. So that whole angle is 120 degrees, yeah. Does that make sense? That whole angle. So really what we have now is a triangle. If, I could, if it helps you, if I could redraw it. This is 120. This side is 30. This side is 33. This is X, which I'm trying to find. Does that clear it up a little bit? Kind of take the coordinates and all the rest out of there? Yeah. We good? Everybody see what we're doing? So we have this side 33, that side 30. 120 is the angle there. I'm trying to find X, the distance. 
What, what should we use here? Law of sines or law of cosines? Of course, we're in the law of cosines section, so of course it's law of cosines. But say you're on the final or something, how would you know it's law of cosines, not sines? Jose? Uh, There's no pairs. Exactly. The Jose theorem. There's no matching pairs. That's right. Exactly. We don't have A with A, B with A, B with C. So yeah. The theorem only works if it's right, right? Yes, well said, exactly. You can only do the A squared plus B squared to C squared for right triangles. And so Katoa also only for right triangles, exactly. Yeah, that was only for right triangles. And we're going to go back to right triangles in the next section. We'll be using a bunch of them. But this is not a right triangle, is it? So we can't do Pythagorean, exactly. Yeah, does everybody see why I can't just go 33 squared plus 30 squared is X squared? That's not a right triangle. This is not a 90, even though I sort of drew it like a 90. It's probably confusing. Sorry, my lack of artistic abilities causing confusion. That's not a right angle. There's no little square in the corner. Yeah, there's no square, even though it sort of looks squarish. But um, it's, yeah, it's not a right angle. We can't do Pythagorean. Exactly. All right, so we're going to do law of cosines. So let's do it. Now, when it comes to law of cosines, I'm going to start with x. x squared equals. Then you do the other two. Remember how the law of cosines is? One side squared is the other two sides squared. Minus 2. Oops, I'm going to run out of room. Let me go to fresh screen here. So what we have is, is this. And that. This is 120. This is x. This is 33. And this is 30. And so law of cosines says x squared is 1 side squared plus the other side squared minus 2 times one side times the other side times the cosine of the angle across from the x, which indeed is the 120, isn't it? Everybody see that? Isn't that exactly what law of cosines says? That any side squared, like Pythagorean, is the other two sides squared minus 2 times the two sides times the cosine of the angle across from that side. So there it is. Hit the buttons and hit the root. Is that what they want? Twenty nine seventy nine, and then root it. X equals fifty fifty four point six. There we go. Does that make sense? Kind of, kind of powerful tool, huh? That we can, a couple ships heading off with their bearings, and boom, we can figure out how far apart they are after three hours. We're, we're able to flex our mathematical might a little bit at this point, right? We can do something, something real. This is some of how they do some of this stuff. We're going to get even more real in about half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> Do some physics, some forces acting on a point and stuff. Oh. <laughs> Are we excited? <laughs> okay. So, so we're start, basically you're starting at island A and you want to head to island C. We're starting at island A, we're heading to island C, and read all those words. It says basically, what's your bearing? And what the, the ship captain, if he's going to head off towards island C, from island A to island C, what's his bearing? All they want to know is the bearing. That looks like north something east, doesn't it? Right? What, though? Right? Now, this, this would be straight north, wouldn't it? Straight north. But it's some kind of angle east of north. How much? Got to find it. To find that, I first have to find this angle theta or x or whatever you want to call it. Call it x. Does that make sense? So it's all about find this angle x inside the triangle and then take 90 minus x, because these two make a right angle, straight north and straight east, and you'll find the angle. Then the bearing will be north, whatever that is, east. Makes sense. Good plan? Good plan. So how do we find x in that triangle? We got three sides. Cosine. Law of cosines, because as Jose says, we have no, I already forgot, complete pair? Set, set, set. that's it. Complete set. We have no complete set. Right? We just have, we don't have a side and an angle. So, so we could do law of cosines. Law of cosines to find that x. Of course, we're in the law of cosines section. So, who am I going to start with? Well, 
the 8 because that's the side across from the angle that I want. So start with 8. So 8 squared is the other two sides squared. 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times those two sides times the cosine of that angle x I'm trying to find. Because that is, right, 8 is across from the x. So what do we got? 64 is 25 plus 49 minus 70. Cosine x, 64 is something. 74 minus 70 cosine x. Subtract 74. What's that? Minus 10 is minus 70 cosine x. Divide by minus 70. One seventh is cosine x. Good to there? Everybody good with my math to there? Trying to find x, what do I do? Inverse, Inverse cosine. These cancel, x equals cosine inverse, 81.786 degrees. I just use three decimals until I'm done, right? 81 points. I don't even round. I just write three decimals. The more you use, you don't even need to round. Just use a bunch, round later. I just write 81, because really that would technically round 787, but whatever. Good enough. I'm used a bunch. 781.786, now that's x, right? That's right here, 81.786 degrees. That's this, so to find the angle right here, which is what I need to get a bearing, because the bearings are always off the y-axis, aren't they? The opposite of reference angles. Reference angles are off the x. This is a bearing. Bearing angles are always off the y-axis because they're often north or south. So what is that? 90 minus, isn't it? 90 degrees minus 81.786, which is, I don't know, 8.214. I think they just want you to round the nearest degree, right? Eight degrees? So this is an eight degree angle because this is basically an 82 degree angle here. They make 90 together. Right? 81.7. Yeah, rounds 82. So, what's the final thing? It's north 8 degrees east. Because we're headed north, but we're 8 degrees to the right, to the east of that. There's our answer. Questions on that one? North 8 degrees east.